Veterans, we salute you this week in this edition of the DCSD Week in Review. For all you do in protecting our freedoms, whether it's the right to vote, to free speech, to learn, your service means we can live. DCSD schools and students saluted vets throughout the week. Before our tribute, though, we've got a lot of other stories, including college signings and exciting news about next year's budget. Your Week in Review starts right now. The snow is falling, the air is getting cooler, winter is just around the corner. And while teams are still wrapping up fall football season, dozens of student-athletes are thinking way beyond winter to next school year their first year in college. This is a big day for you as you sign your letter of intent. Seven student athletes at Chaparral High School and several other high schools signed letters of intent this week. Some seniors, like Carter Griffin, are going to continue swimming. Competing in the SEC is going to be a lot of fun because you've got a lot of really, really fast schools there, so it's going to be a really competitive conference, and I can't wait. Other students will be spiking the volleyball, while another, Maddie DeWinter, it's relieving to be done with the process is blazing a trail in lacrosse at CU. She'll be part of their first women's team in school history. Well, I want to thank my parents most of all. They're so supportive of me, both my high school coach and my club coach. No matter their sport, we're proud they'll be representing Douglas County across the United States. Chaparral is the best high school in the state and all of you represent us very, very well and thank you for um, just doing that for us. Other headlines. Our district is sharing some great news. No budget cuts in the 2013 to 14 school year. It was the topic of the first hour of Let's Talk Education. It means our schools can focus on their students, that they can they can focus on teaching and learning and doing cool things for students without worrying about reducing their budgets for next year. So Your questions and topics are always welcome. Send us a tweet or an email to those addresses you see on the screen and we'd be happy to answer your questions on the air. Our vets deserve our thanks. The reason in 1954, President Eisenhower branded every November 11th as Veterans Day. No doubt he would smile at this kind of tribute. First, at Cimarron. Thank you. Thank you. Students braved wind, frigid wind at that, to greet our community's service members. It's really cold, but it feels really good to make yeah. signs for the veterans. Inside, it's such a pleasure to come here. Cimarron honored vets like Larry Boyd with a tribute through music. It instills in them the, the values of uh, what the veterans did for them. Uh, I, I, it makes me very proud. Students in Parker honored vets by inviting in two guest speaker veterans, one on stage. That this is a country. Uh, unlike any other country in the world. And one on YouTube. Good day, I'm uh, Dr. Jeff Tomlin. I'm a commander in the United States Navy. The event also celebrated a remarkable achievement for several district schools. Everybody can make a difference, no matter how small. Together, they raised more than $4,000 for homes for our troops and helped build a home for a local veteran in need. I love that our veterans can come and um, they can interact with the veterans and find out what that means, what it means to serve on a much grander scale. And they're, they're serving on a much smaller scale, but it's the beginning and it's a stepping stone to maybe to something bigger and better. Finally, Clear Sky Elementary students voiced a stirring set of songs celebrating America and every veteran. Thank you, vets, for protecting our country without hesitation. And thanks to all of you for watching.